You've reached the Love and Luck podcast. Hey, honey. So, remember how we were thinking of remodeling upstairs so we had a couple of spare rooms? I know we said we'd revisit the idea later when we had enough money, but I was thinking. I know we have a bit of money saved up, but we also have magic. And I mean, I know I'm the one who's always on his soapbox about how we shouldn't use our magic for our own personal gain and all that shit, but fuck, I'd just really like to be able to give Sarah and Mira their own room, instead of them just camping out in our living room, you know? I don't know, I just, I don't feel like it's for our benefit, you know? It's for them. Anyway, I don't really know, like, what we could do to find that extra money somewhere, but I'm sure we'll think of something. We'll talk about it when you get home. I miss you, and I'm really looking forward to having you home again. I hope the train home isn't too terrible, or that you're able to sleep through it if it is. Love you. Hey, babe. I'm on the tram on my way home from Southern Cross now, so I should see you in like half an hour or so if the traffic is good. God, Melbourne always feels like a big hug after being in the country. Even if I was only gone for like a day and a night. Anyway, that's a good idea on the remodeling, and uh, I may have already gotten started on it. After I listened to your voicemail, I threw some feelings around and ended up making friends with this guy on the train on the way home. His name is Bruce and he's a construction tradie, which I know, right? Anyway, Bruce and I were talking about the best of luck and he thinks it sounds like a great place and is going to come check it out tonight probably after he's had dinner with his kid, who is trans by the way which is why he was so keen to hear about the bar. He gave me his card and said that if we ever need construction work done, he might be able to swing us a good deal. Okay, so I was thinking more, actually, I don't know what I was thinking more, but I know it wasn't, let's brainwash someone into giving us a discount. You know how I feel about that sort of thing. (sighs) Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. That was a huge overreaction. I know you didn't do that. I just... I don't know. I don't want to get too casual about this stuff. It's good he's going to come around to see us. We can certainly ask him about mates rates or whatever without magic. That I certainly have no trouble with. And I mean, you could have just bumped into him and gotten talking without magic, so I have to remember that too. By our own rules, it's fine. I'm sorry for being a dick. Anyway, we'll talk about it when you get home. Love you. Sorry. Hey, babe. It kind of sucked having to come back downstairs again after you went to bed, but at least I got a few cuddles in before duty calls. It's so fucking good to be home. I'm glad you're feeling better about Bruce now that you've met him. I told you he was a good guy. No magic required to gain his assistance. Just a good guy trying to do good that I magicked my way into meeting. It is pretty lucky that he can start next week, though. I wasn't expecting that. And no magic required on that one, either. I love you. And once again, it's okay that you got a bit upset today. Like I said before, you're the moral compass. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you sleep well. Hey, honey. I do feel a lot better today, and I really do like Bruce. He really does seem like a good person, and I'm glad he's as excited about helping us as we are about improving the situation for our crashes. And I know you said it was okay, And I know I already apologized yesterday, but I just wanted to do it again. I'm really sorry for snapping yesterday. 
I know we talked through it, but I'm still sorry. I just... I don't want to take advantage of people, you know? I mean, I know you don't want that either, but that's my point. I think that people usually don't intend to do anything bad, but things just edge along until it's happening by accident. I'm just... I'm just scared that that's what will happen, that's all. <sighs> Sorry. I know I worry about this a lot. Probably too much. I love you. See you when you get up. Hey, so I just woke up and listened to your voicemail, and I know I'm about to go downstairs and see you anyway, but I wanted to leave you this message instead of just talking about it in person, because this is really important, and I want to be, like, really clear about it. So I'll tell you this in person, and then when you check your voicemail next, you'll hear it again. I like that you worry about the ethics of all this stuff. It's one of the reasons I feel safe exploring this magic nonsense with you. You're a really kind and thoughtful person, and you worry about this stuff before it becomes a problem. That's good! You're a really good person, and you make me a better person, and I wouldn't change any of that. I might soothe some of the anxiety, but the worrying part, the part where you're keeping an eye on us and how we use this power, I wouldn't change that. That's part of what makes you someone trustworthy. I love you, Kane. Worries and all. Love and Luck is written by Erin Kian and produced by Pasa Volpez Productions. Kane is voiced by Lee Davis Thalborn. Jason is voiced by Erin Kian. Credits spoken by Rosalind Quinn. Additional sound effects supplied by Kyle Evans. Recorded by Kermie Braden. For more information about Love and Luck, check out our website, loveandluckpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook as Love and Luck Podcast and follow us on Twitter at, at loveluckpodcast.com. 